Marcus Aurelius, one of the greatest emperors the world has ever seen. But what made him so special? For this we need to go back into time. Back to a time that was violent. A time that was unrelenting and that forged some of the greatest emperors the world has ever seen. And one of them is Marcus Aurelius. Thankfully, he wrote his thoughts down and I am going to read them to you. This is part one of Marcus Aurelius Meditations. Of my grandfather Verus, I have learned to be gentle and meek and to refrain from all anger and passion. From the fame and memory of him that begot me, I have learned both shamefastness and manlike behavior. Of my mother, I have learned to be religious and bountiful, and to forbear not only to do but to intend any evil, to content myself with a spare diet, and to fly all such excess as is incidental to great wealth. Of my great-grandfather, to frequent both public schools and auditories, and to get me good and able teachers at home, and that I ought not to think much if upon such occasions I were at excessive charges. Of him that brought me up not to be fondly addicted to either of the two great factions of the coursers in the circus, called Prazini and Veneti, nor in the amphitheater partially to favor any of the gladiators or fencers, as either the Parmulari or the Secutores, moreover to endure labor, nor to need many things. When I have anything to do, to do it myself rather than by others, not to meddle with many businesses and not easily to admit of any slander. I have learnt of Diognetus not to busy myself about vain things and not easily to believe those things which are commonly spoken by such as take upon them to work wonders and by sorcerers or prestidigators and impostors concerning the powers of charms and their driving out of demons or evil spirits and the like. Not to keep quails for the game, nor to be mad after such things, not to be offended with other men's liberty of speech, and to apply myself unto philosophy. Him also I must thank that ever I heard first Bacchius, then Tandazis and Marcianus, and that I did write dialogues in my youth, and that I took liking to the philosopher's little couch and skins, and such other things, which by the Grecian discipline are proper to those who profess philosophy. To Rusticus I am beholding that I first entered into the conceit that my life wanted some redress and cure, and then that I did not fail into the ambition of ordinary sophists either to write tracts concerning the common theorems or to exhort men unto virtue and the study of philosophy by public orations, as also that I never by way of ostentation did affect to show myself an active, able man for any kind of bodily exercises, and that I gave over the study of rhetoric and poetry and of elegant, neat language that I did not use to walk about the house in my long robe, nor to do any such things. Moreover, I learned of him to write letters without any affectation or curiosity, such as that was, which by him was written to my mother from Sinuesa, and to be easy and ready to be reconciled and well pleased again with them that had offended me, as soon as any of them would be content to seek unto me again to read with diligence, not to rest satisfied with the light and superficial knowledge, nor quickly to assent to things commonly spoken of. Whom also I must thank that ever I lighted up 
upon Epictetus, his hypomnemata, or moral commentaries, and common factions, which also he gave me of his own. I have learned from Apollonius true liberty and unvariable steadfastness, and not to regard anything at all, though never so little, but right and reason, and always, whether in the sharpest pains, or after the loss of a child, or in long disease, to be still the same man, who also was a present and visible example unto me, that it was possible for the same man to be both vehement and remiss, a man not subject to be vexed and offended with the incapability of his scholars and auditors in his lectures and expositions, and a true pattern of a man who of all his good gifts and faculties least esteemed in himself that his excellent skill and ability to teach and persuade others the common theorems and maxims of the Stoic philosophy. Of him also I learned how to receive favors and kindnesses, as commonly they are accounted, from friends, so that I might not become obnoxious unto them, for them nor more yielding upon occasion, than in right I ought, and yet so that I should not pass them neither, as an unsensible and unthankful man. You see in life, in your life, this was part one of Marcos Aurelius' Meditations. Maybe you can let his words guide you towards becoming a better man, concentrating on your goals, being honest with yourself, and trying to achieve what you want. This is there to do motivation. Thanks for watching, and stay blessed.